smile on your face, man. If it's not on there, you need to put it on because God's in the house. It's his breath in your lungs this morning. You listen to what those words were saying? It's his breath in your lungs. You and I have life today because of his breath in our lungs. Ooh, isn't that amazing? So we get to praise the king of kings. You know what makes me excited? That we get to praise and we praise and we are a, a, a praising church. We give praise to the king. Isn't that awesome? I mean, we come together, and we get excited, and we, get, we're, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? I mean, we're living and breathing and walking and moving, and we have friends, and we have church, and we have freedom, and we have, we could just keep going on, couldn't we? We could write a list and fill up this entire room and more, because we have so much to be thankful for. And I'm really, really, really thankful for that today's baptism. It's a special day. And I believe somebody's life's going to get changed. I do. I believe somebody's life today is going to get changed. And what's really cool is we have two dads that's going to baptize their daughters. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about making your day. When I got that call. Listen, I'm in Walmart and get a call from one, and he's telling me what's happened. And I get to get encouraged by that and all excited by that. And about 10 minutes later, get another call, another dad. He wants to baptize his daughter. Isn't that awesome? Woo! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So we have so much to be thankful for. Lives are being changed. We get to be a part of it. God lets us in on what he's doing. That's just amazing. And so here's what I'm going I'm, I'm to let you know today, is that some of you came today not knowing this was possibly going to happen to you today, that you have an opportunity that if you've never been baptized, if you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you've always said, you know, I, I just don't know. I'm, not, I'm a little nervous. I don't know if I can do that. I, or maybe, maybe you didn't take the time. Or maybe you had not been to a place where they had a baptism. The baptism waters are right here. They're right here. And here's what's really cool. We have everything you need. You say, I didn't bring a change of clothes. Well, we have a change for you right back here. We have a hair dryer. We have all the stuff afterwards. We have all the stuff you need. So I want you to be thinking and praying and be open to that, because what Jesus said, Jesus allowed every one of us, he gave us that example of after salvation, after we ask Christ to come into our, our lives and to be Lord and Savior of our life, then here's what Jesus did. Jesus was baptized by John. He, became, he, he, did, he did that as an example for us. So it's saying to the world, Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Savior, and here's what happened to me. See, I was raised, I grew up in a Methodist church. Some of you grew up Methodist, some of you grew up Baptist, some of you grew up Wesleyan, some grew up Catholic, some grew up, I mean, I know we have everybody in here, right? In the Methodist church, they did this thing, you'd get christened as a baby, okay? That means they dedicate you as a baby. And then, at a certain age, I was able to be sprinkled. I was sprinkled. Is that a bad thing? No, that was a baptism for me. That was my baptism, okay? As I got older, I got into a church where they said, if you want to be a part of this church, is what they said, you need to be immersed. I didn't like that. Okay, I didn't like that at all. I, I, just, I was like, no, that, that discounts my baptism. They said, well, if you want to be here, then that's what you need to do. So I went through with it because I knew that's where God wanted me to be. And here's what I'm saying to you. There's nothing wrong with being sprinkled. There's nothing wrong with being immersed. There's nothing wrong with being poured, any of that. But I'm going to go by Jesus' example, and we're going we're gonna to baptize you this morning if you want to be baptized. I say all that to say some of you, have, maybe you've been sprinkled, but you've never been immersed. I'm going to encourage you to do that. So, Reg, you didn't like that. But once I did it, I realized, and I looked up, and I studied, and I realized what Jesus did. And I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. i got to get in on what Jesus did. I want to do what Jesus did. It's all about what Jesus has done. So I'm just going, I want you to think about that because we're going to talk about some things in this creatures of habit because we're creatures of habit. But before that today, I want you to bow your head, close your eyes, and I want you to ask God, God, do you want me to be baptized today?
Just open hearts and minds. Because some of you today, that's the next step. That's the next step that God has in your life. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you that you allow us to serve you. Thank you that you allow us to come together in freedom to worship you and to praise your name. Thank you that you allow us to come here. It's a privilege to be able to learn your word and and gather together and be prayed for and just get all the things that you're about to live that abundant life. God, I want everything Everything you want for us at Velocity. Every person in here, open hearts and minds. God, help us to receive. Thank you for being here. Thank you for praise. Thank you for worship. Thank you for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we love you and we need you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen. Amen. So we're in this final of this series, Creatures of Habit. Creatures of Habit. Because every one of us, we're creatures of habit. You did certain things that you had to do to get ready this morning. And every day we go through different things that are either good or either bad, different habits that we have, good or bad. And if you remember through the weeks we've talked about, some of those things is that the power of the tongue, it's, it, it can be a creature of habit that we can say the good, we can say the bad, we can, we can lie, we can praise God, we can curse God, we can, there's all those things that the power of the tongue had. We remember last week we talked about anger, we've talked about, I mean there's so many different things. But every one of us has those habits, good or bad. And today, I'm going to title this message, Dead to Sin, But Alive in Christ. Dead to Sin and Alive in Christ. Because what has to happen is, every one of us has to recognize, we have to recognize what's going on in our life. Let me give an example. So this past week, and and just uh, five days out of the week, I take my daughter to school. My wife's a school teacher, so she goes before I do. So, oh, so in the mornings, I take my daughter to school, and after I drop her off, I have several different ways that I can go to get back here to church. And many times the traffic's really crazy on Pleasantburg, if you ever travel that road. That's crazy, isn't it? Uh, you can take all kinds of different ways, but I finally found a route that goes through downtown Greenville. You say, Reggie, how is that quicker? It's amazing. I found it, gps it, and I'm like, hey, that's not too bad. And so as I take this route every morning... Go up that way, come up through Cherrydale, come up State Park, all that kind of good stuff. But as I'm going through downtown, I noticed that this one particular morning, there was something a little bit different. It's one of those big, huge orange construction signs, and I caught road closures, all I saw on it. I said, I'll have to pay attention to that the next day. So the next day, I looked at it, and I caught October 14th. I thought, okay, road closure, October 14th. That, that means me. you got to know something's happening. And I looked at it again, and then it gave me the end date. Something's going on with that, that particular sign. And I said, oh, that's going to mean things are going to change for me, and my quick route's going to change. And so it finally comes October 14th, and I'm looking down, but everything's clear. And I'm like, I can still go that way. I thought that'd be really good to go, and I looked, and everything was clear up until a certain point. And when it got to a certain point, as far as I could see, everything was backed up. I'm thinking, uh-oh, somebody didn't read the sign. And I'm not going to go down that way. I'm going to be smart. So I turned, and I saw this other sign, and this other sign said detour. And I t- took the detour and ran around, and it was a little bit longer, but it helped head off me being stuck in traffic for a long, long, long time. It helped for me to recognize the sign. So I'm going to ask you this morning, if you want to write down in your notes, recognize, to recognize, to identify the bad habit. Identify what's going on in your life. We need to prepare. We need to pre- be prepared because we are aware. We need to prepare. We need to be aware of what's going on around us and what kind of things are happening in our life. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11, I'm looking at the New Living Translation. It says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin are those who worship idols. That means anything that comes before God. Or those who commit adultery or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or are abusive, or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. And some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, 
you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So here's these list of things. Here's some of the things. I mean, there's no, no way God's going to be able to put all those things right there. He could if he wanted, but he has a few of those listed. So we have to look, and look, look, look in our lives and look and go, what do I need to be aware of in my life that I'm doing that's not good? And how, do, how am I aware? How do I recognize? Well, usually the things that aren't good for us, they cause pain. The things that aren't good for us cause hurt. And I don't know about you, but as I was a younger brother... I was able to watch my sister. And those of you who have brothers and sisters, here's what I've learned about life. If you look and you study and you're aware of what's going on, you can learn from the mistakes that those that are older than you make. Isn't that amazing? My sister, she, was, uh, she did some things she wasn't supposed to do. When it came to school, she didn't study. And as a result, things didn't go that well. And she did some other things. And I'm not here just calling her on the carpet. She'd tell you right here. There's some things she didn't do. And I thought, I'm going to be smart. She gets in trouble. She goes to the principal's office. She gets in trouble with mom and dad. I'm not going to do that. There's things she's doing. And then she gets out of And I always kept thinking, well, somewhere it's going to turn this thing. The ship's going to turn around. Maybe you've seen other people that's in your life or maybe from a distance. And you're watching them and you're observing. And you go, oh, they're making some mistakes. I don't want to go there. I talk to you all the time about LIPD, right? Because we go look, and we take that as teaching, and we go, I don't want to go there. If I do this, I'm going to get pulled over. If I drink and drive, that's not a good thing. I'm going to jail. If I do drugs, I'm going to get caught. If I do this, that's not good. If I don't do this, you have all kinds of things you can look. You and I can be aware, and we can look at the signs, and we can go, oh, that's not a good place to be. We're creatures of habit. Why do we think we have so many things that we really like that aren't good for us? One of them's food for me, man. You give, you give my wife some ice cream, you give me some, some peanut M&Ms, you give me, I mean, you, you name a food, it's going to be there. We enjoy that kind of stuff. And you have different things in your life. You've got to look and say, what are those things? So Jesus is talking, we're talking right here in God's Word, thieves, greedy people, drunkards, abusive, cheap people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were what? You were cleansed. You were made holy. Remember we talked about the old clothes? we got to take off the old. we got to put on the new. And when we receive Jesus, we put on the new. We're cleansed. We're made holy. We're made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. By the Spirit of our God. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures there where we need to look and we need to search and we, all those kind of things. Psalms 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. When's the last time you told God? Say, God, I've been messing up. I've got different things. Or maybe you don't know. God, search me. Try me. Psalm 139, 24. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Jeremiah 17, verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. So what kind of things are you taking part in? What kind of things are we taking part when we go day to day, day in and day out? What kind of things are we taking part in? Because it says in Romans eight twenty seven, and he, God, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So God searches our hearts, and if we'll ask him, he'll search and he'll point out those things in us that don't need to be there. So has anybody in here messed up? Absolutely. Have we all messed up? Absolutely. Does God, does God pop us on the head because we've done this, this, and this? No. But there are circumstances, there are, there are consequences that happen as a result of sin. And, and I believe God, God says over and over, don't go there. Don't even go there. That's not who you are. When you receive Jesus, it's a brand new deal. And there's some things that need to happen when we're aware that we see those things that are going on, that we see those things that God, the, he pokes us and prods us and says, Reggie, that's not good. You don't need to go there. That's not good. You don't need to think that. That's not good. You don't need to hang out with those people. That, and he, all those kind of things, maybe he's telling you. And if you hadn't asked him, I guarantee you he'll show you. And so then after we recognize, after we recognize, the second thing there in your, in your outline is to repent. We need to commit to change. We need to commit to change. I was talking to a good friend just the other day. I hadn't seen him in quite a while. We were talking a little bit, and the first thing he said is, I am messed up. I said, you okay? He said, I am full of chaos. 
He said, my whole life's chaos. We sat down, we talked a little bit. He said, I am so full of chaos. I'm, I'm chaos at home, chaos at work, chaos and everything. I said, whoa, well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's, let's work on it. And, and, and so as we talked about it a little bit more, he was very aware of what was happening around in certain areas. I said, you realize one of the things, and I, he's close enough I can tell him this, I said, you're speaking some negativity into your life just by talking about all that chaos that you have. You've just said everything negative about everything bad that's happening in your life. So as we talked about it more, and he was aware of that, he said, well, here's one thing that the chaos has done for me. He said, the chaos has helped me to realize how selfish I am. And you know what I, I thought? I thought that's maturity. That's a mature statement coming out of a guy that's got some things going on in his life, and he's a believer, and he follows God, and he's, he, he's an amazing guy, man of God. But then you look at the things going on in his life now. I said, we've all had chaos, and I was able to share some things that I've gone through. And as we talked about all that, though, as I heard him say, I realize how selfish I am. Whoo, that's an eye-opening statement. Have you ever thought that about yourself? Have you ever thought that you could be selfish? And here's the statement that came after that when he said how selfish he was. He said, and it is a humbling thing. Because every one of us, if we don't have Christ in our life, it becomes about self, doesn't it? And if we take our eyes off Christ, it becomes about self. All of us. We can get in trouble really quick. And the conversation ended really, really well, and we were able to pray with each other, and it was a really good thing. But here's what I find out, that if I'm aware and I recognize that there's things in my life that aren't good, then I'm going to need to repent. I'm going to need to make some changes. I'm going to need to commit to change because the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and will purify us from all unrighteousness. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? That God in his word says, if you and I, because we've all messed up, if we'll confess our sins, he is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and purify us from all what? Any, any and all unrighteousness. And then in Acts 3, 19 says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That those times are refreshing. See, God knows everything about us. He knows all the mistakes we've made. He knows all the stuff we've been a part of. Yet he still loves us. So when we ask and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we become a new kind of man. A man in Christ is a new kind of person. A new breed or species that never existed before. Listen to this. The Greek word translated new means unheard of before. It means new in quality or a kind. You're new in quality and a kind when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. A new kind of person. A new breed. You're not just a forgiven sinner. You and I are new creations with a new kind of life. A man in Christ is a partaker of the life and the nature of God. Whew, that you and I get to be part of the part and in, in the, in the nature of God. We, we, we are his. When we ask Christ, we're king's kids. That's pretty amazing. So we got to come back to God and say, God, I want to repent. I want to be aware. I want to recognize. And I want to repent and I want to follow the things that you want me to be about. I found a quote from James Stewart. He put it this way. This life which flows from God into man is something totally different from anything experienced on the natural plane. It is a supernatural life. It makes man a new creation. It is not the intensification of powers already possessed, but is the sudden emergence of an entirely new and an original element. Whoo! That's a mouthful, isn't it? We're new people. We're created in Christ Jesus to do brand new things, to do the things that God's called us to, to do. And we, we have to recognize and be aware of those bad habits. We have to repent and say, I'm going to make a change. I want to make an improvement. I want to do the things God's called me to do. And there's this thing called we, we're, we're headed on the wrong path. And you've heard of that 180. So if we're going down the wrong path, then we're going to turn around and we're going to take a new path. And I was thinking about how many things in life do we have that we see where things are one way and then they turn and it goes another way. And I actually thought about the flow of the seasons. It's been a little weird this year, hasn't it? Summer's been hot as fire and then you get into the fall and you think it's fall one day and then it goes back to summer and then you think it's fall and it goes back and you're like, what's happening, God? What are you doing? But eventually we know it's going to be winter, right? 
So what I've been doing at my house, I've been preparing my yard all the way for spring. And went ahead and cut it, and went ahead and got the leaves crunched up, and went ahead and put some fertilizer on it. And I've been pruning some things because I know that spring's going to be coming somewhere. But right now, we're in fall, and as hot as it may be, there's still things that I have to do. Because in winter, everything's going to be dead. Just closed my pool. I don't know if any of you have a, a, an in-ground pool, and I closed the pool. That is, let me tell you, that is a chore. And to get things ready, the water's going and things are fine. And then to, to, to get it ready, I have to put the right chemicals in there, and I have to make sure that everything's undone, and I have to make sure that we have the cover on it. Why? Because I'm not going to swim in it when it's like 50 and 40 and 30 degrees. That's not going to happen. Winter's coming. Snow's coming. If I continue to allow it to do that, when that snow hits, that's not going to be a good thing. Here's what I'm saying. There are changes in life. There are changes that we have to go through. There are processes and things like that. But when it comes to being a follower of Christ, we have to come to him and say, God, I want to follow you. I want to change however you want me to change. I want to do your will and your way. And I want to repent because you know what's best for my life. And then the third thing that God wants us to do is he wants us to release to him everything in our life at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to fully surrender my will at the feet of Jesus. Remember what Daniel was talking about earlier? He talked about Mary at the feet of Jesus and Jesus said it is better. She has chosen the better of the two. Woo. So that means we need to be, be paying attention. We need to recognize. We need to repent. And we need to release things at the feet of Jesus. You realize how many times we trust other people in life? I don't know if anybody remembers when you've had your wisdom teeth out. Ooh, that's not a good time, is it? I was thinking back to when my wife had her wisdom teeth out. And I remember, oh, I felt so sorry for her. But it was really, part of it was funny. And I wish, you'd seen the videos of those people. My wife was one of those people. And I remember her laying in the car seat ne next to me. And, and she was saying things. And I thought, ooh, I can ask her all kind of questions right now. <laughs> now, how did she get to that point? She trusted a dentist to put sharp objects in her mouth and to take her teeth out. Isn't it amazing to think the people we trust and we don't even know, but we're going to trust that they're going to do what's right and take care of us? Or how about how many times have you flown on a plane? Do you know the pilot? But we're we going to get on, and do we know the mechanics that worked on it? Do we know the ones that made that thing? Yet we're going to get and go thousands of, uh, thousands of miles uh, above the ground, and, and we're going to trust somebody, and we're going to trust those mechanics, and we're going to put all that. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? We do those kind of things. Oh, my goodness, and it's going to fly that fast, but we're going to trust? And how about that seat you're in this morning? I bet most of you didn't check that seat out and go, oh, I wonder if those, all those screws are, I wonder what's going on. Nobody thought that. But you're trusting that somebody put that thing together, and it's going to hold you today. So there's all kind of things that we trust. God is the one that I want to fully release everything in my life to, and get at his feet and fully release and say, God, your will, your way. Because he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's what God says. He's not here to condemn us. He's here to bless us and to love us and to take us into his arms and say, I forgive you. I'll change your life. And when you die, you'll go to heaven. That's what God is saying to every one of us. If we'll surrender totally and completely, but we can't hold anything back. And I thought, how many times in life we say, God, I want you to take this, this, and this, but I don't want to give you this little part. What's really cool about God, and I was thinking about this, what if God sent you a letter telling you things and habits in your life, you and me, Things that we need to avoid. What if he gave us examples of men and women who lived lives that were doing right and, he, and they lived lives that weren't doing right? What if he sent us a letter like that? Do you think we would follow that? And then I started thinking, oh, you know what God did? He sent us a letter. He sent you a letter and me a letter in this. 
You ever thought of it that way? God sent you a letter. This is personal to you. Everything about life, everything that you and I need to know is, is in here. He'll tell you who you need to hang out with. He says, if you're hanging out with the wrong people, you're going to probably get in trouble because bad company corrupts good morals. If you're thinking you're going to change somebody because uh, uh, you just think I'm going to hang out and just because I'm hanging out with them and I'm going to change everything about them, uh-uh, only God's Word will change them. If you're thinking, well, I'm just going to handle money on my own and know how to do finances without coming to God, you're probably going to be in, in a world of mess. But if you come to him, God talks so much about money in here. Isn't that amazing? God talks about relationships in here. God talks about work in here. God talks about marriage in here. I mean, you just keep going on. God talks about everything in here because he knows we're creatures of habit. And if we get on the wrong stuff, we'll get in trouble. And it'll be a whole lot worse than ice cream. And you and I have seen it, and the people that are around us, all you got to do is take a look at the news just for a little bit. Just take a look. Watch what's going on. Watch 10 minutes of news. Watch five minutes. Look around, and you don't even have to go there. Look at the people in your office. Look at the people in your neighborhood. We find out that a lot of people have a lot of habits that are headed the wrong way. Why? Because they, do, they don't understand. And I really hate it when I see somebody that's headed the wrong way. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because they don't understand who they are in Jesus. They don't understand who their creator is and how much he loves them. There's some of you in here this morning, you don't really understand how much God loves you. And if you'll ask God and you'll say, God, help me to understand just a little bit about your love. And you know what he's going to say? He's most likely going to say, go hop in this thing right here. And then I want you to go to look at the, the cross and what I did for you on the cross. See, that's, that really tells us how much he loves us because he didn't have to go to the cross, but he voluntarily went to the cross so that you and I could have life and have it to the full and we could do life without all the bad habits. Isn't that amazing? He came and he said, I'll make you a new creature. I won't just fix you. I'm going to give you a brand new. Not just fix you, I'm going to give you brand new. I'm going to make you brand new. I'm going to give you a whole new way of thinking. If you'll, if you'll follow me, I'll give you a brand new spirit. And then I'll give you a gift. I'll give you the Holy Spirit that'll help you, that'll comfort you, that'll guide you, that'll encourage you. I'll help you. I'll order your steps. And if you'll come to me, you can do my will and my way, and you'll be amazed what God's going to do. See, I, I actually believe the words of this book that God has a greater, greater, greater purpose for me here on earth. Now the question is, do you believe that? Because I, I believe that God has a greater purpose for you on earth. I believe that God's got great and amazing plans for you here on earth. I believe that God wants you to use you to change somebody else's life. I believe that God wants every person in here to get under his lordship, to release everything at the feet of Jesus and say, God, you're willing your way. What do you want me to do? And then you'll, you'll be amazed what starts happening. Am I going to have some warfare? Absolutely. That's just part of it. But what does God say? Stand firm. So when I get under God's lordship and I get under him, whatever he wants, then I know that, oh my goodness, God wants to bless my marriage. Do you think I call in for that? Absolutely. God bless my marriage. God, I want everything that you want from me and my wife. Everything. Why? Because he designed marriage. Why? Because he designed her and he designed me. Oh, that's going to be an amazing marriage. How about in parenting? God, I want everything you want for us to be as parents. I want everything you want for my daughter. I'm going to call it in. I'm going to call in that she follows you. I'm going to call in that she'll hunger and thirst for righteousness. I'm going to call in that she'll be filled. That's what God's Word says. I'm going to call in that velocity is going to reach new heights and new levels. I'm going to call in that every one of us surrender and some sit at the feet of Jesus and that we do everything God's called us to do and we're going to reach those people and those people and those people and all these people in the surrounding area and we're going to make a difference before we go to heaven. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. But if it becomes about me and if it becomes about selfishness and if I take my eyes off Jesus just like Peter, I'm going to sink in the water every time. And I bet there's some people in here today just like I have many times, I've taken my eyes off Jesus and I start sinking. Can you imagine those disciples? I bet they're looking. There he goes thinking again. I told him. I told him he wasn't supposed to do that. See, the cool thing about Peter was Peter stepped out in faith and had his eyes on Jesus. Only when he looked around him and looked at all the mess around him did he start thinking. He started thinking about the storm. He started thinking, I'm not supposed to be able to walk on water. I'm not supposed to be able to. Oh, but I look at Jesus and everything goes back up. 
So when you and I, we start saying, in my work situation, Jesus, I want you Lord of all. Above and beneath and around and help me in my thought process. Now things start happening in a brand new way. Now my attitude, now my creatures of habit starts changing because I want to be more and more like Jesus every day. And God said if anyone would deny himself, anyone, anyone, anyone is welcome into the kingdom of God. But first we must deny ourselves and take up the cross. Woo! Deny ourselves, deny the selfishness, deny the bad habits, deny the stuff that's not good for me, and say, God, I want everything you want for me and those around me. Because here's what's, ha- here's what's really cool about following Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you affect all those people around you. When you do bad stuff, do you affect people around you? Absolutely. When you get angry, do you affect the people around you? Absolutely. And you name whatever bad habit you want to put in that place there and say, does that affect people? Absolutely. But now I'm going to follow God, and I'm going to do what he wants, and I need help with this habit here. You say, Reggie, I don't understand. How do I, how do I make a change? You come and release it at the feet of Jesus, and day by day by day by day, I can do it. You can do it. And sometimes we need some encouragement. You say, well, what about this? Well, sometimes we need some accountability partners in there. Sometimes we need a friend in there praying with us. You know how many, you know how many texts I got this weekend of people praying for me? Oh, my goodness. You know what that does for me? Reggie's being prayed for. Velocity's being prayed for. See, I know somebody else cares. I can look out here, and uh, uh, I'm t- it's, it's amazing because I know the people in here that are praying and change is happening and great amazing things that God is doing with us. Y'all agree with that? Now, do you believe it for yourself? That's enough of me talking. Now it comes the time between you and God. What's going to happen between you and God? Release it at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to give you a time to reflect here. I'm going to give you a time as they play just to think about where you're at in life. And I'm also going to give you a time, if you've been sitting here saying, I want to follow Jesus and I want to take that next step because you've received Jesus as Lord and Savior. If you hadn't, I'm going to pray a prayer with you where you can receive a Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then the next step would be that you go forward in baptism today telling the world, I'm going to follow Jesus. And some of you have been here thinking about that, saying, you know what? Well, let me just, let me encourage you. Today's the day. Today's a great day. We have the stuff in the back. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's talk to the king. Jesus, I need you. That would be a great place to start. Every one of us, Jesus, I need you. I've been doing life on my own. I've been trying to make things happen, and it's not working, and I need you. Your will and your way. Maybe you're here saying, I, I've made a mess of my life and I can't believe God would accept me. Absolutely, he'll res- accept you. Maybe you're saying, I've been too selfish. That's, God's after you because he loves you. Maybe you don't know what step to take. God's after you because he loves you. And you can pray this prayer, mean it from your heart. Jesus, I invite you in. I want to follow you. I've made a mess of my life. Please forgive me. I want to thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want to thank you for living for me. And I want to follow you and release everything to you at the feet of Jesus right now. Thank you for loving me. And then you can say, thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. And some in here, you have strongholds, you have things that you're like, Reggie, I'm dealing with stuff, and I know you don't know it. Well, here's the deal. I know God knows it, and God... He cares more about you than you could ever imagine. Father, I just want to say thank you for being here, that we're in your presence. Thank you that you hear us. Thank you that we can release whatever's been on our heart and mind, whatever kind of things we're going through. We can come down here, down front. We can sit in our seat wherever we're at. We can release things to you right now. Those bondages, those strongholds, those whatever's happening, we want to give it all to you because we can't do life on our own. God, for those who are thinking about baptism right now, I just pray that you'd poke and prod them and do whatever so that they'll make that next step so they can tell the world that you're Lord. 
We thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving to us. As we continue in prayer, we give you thanks and praise because you're the king. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to be baptized, go through those double doors right there. we got some folks that will help you out, and they'll lead you where you need to go. Okay? I'm going to encourage you. If you want to take a friend, take a friend. And you, you know, if you're, if you're saying, I want to get baptized, but I'm a little nervous, well, take a friend with you. Okay? Say, come. You might want to just, just uh, turn to the side and say, hey, come go with me. Okay? Just come go with me. This is amazing what a little bit of encouragement will do. And let's have an amazing time of baptism this morning. baptize my daughter this morning. This is Adeline. It's cold, baby. It's okay. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. Come on, let me help you. Over the past year, you can do it. Come on. One, two, three. Let's go. There we go. Over the past year, Addie has been asking questions, been talking a lot, and, um, and, and she said, you know, Daddy, am I a Christian? Daddy, do I have Jesus in my heart? I know Jackson has Jesus in his heart, but do I have Jesus in my heart? And, and I was telling Reggie, she always asked that like in the middle of like the dairy aisle at Walmart. And I'm like, not now. You know? In my mind, this has happened in a lot sweeter environment. Not here, baby. Not The pantyhose are right over there. We can't do it right here. I got to tell this story one day. And so uh, I texted Angie at the beginning of the week last week and, and, and said, hey, we, I need to spend some time with Addie. And so she and I went out for a walk. Um, was that Wednesday? Wednesday or Thursday, I think it was. And so we, we took a walk, and, and, um, and she started asking questions. And I said, well, baby, you can ask Jesus in your heart right now. And so we are just walking through our neighborhood. And, and she was like, right here? And I was like, yeah, right here while we're walking. And so... Um, who, who lives in your heart right now, baby? Jesus. Well, we're really excited about that. And I'm, it's an honor for me to get to baptize you, okay? I'm going to let Mr. Tim hold this. We're going to jump down. not cold. Is it cold? Yes. <laughs> We've only been here for just a minute, okay? Do you see everybody out here? That's our church family, and they're here to support us, right? All right. They're clapping for you. A couple weeks ago, my daughter Jude accepted Christ, and she's been asking about getting baptized, and she's ready, right? Mm, yes. Okay. Jude? Who's your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. All right.
hey, so we got some folks that are going to get baptized today. So y'all just hang on one second. Y'all excited? Yeah. You need to know it's not too late. Okay, they already warmed them up. It got really warm in those two, okay? So uh, if you want to come, come on. What a great day. What an amazing, amazing day for us to worship the King, just to relax in His presence. Oh, my goodness. God is so good, isn't He? I love it that we they bring all the, we bring in all the kids so they can see what's going on. They're up in the balcony. I want to take a look. Michaela, Michaela is coming. So, guys, this is Michaela. Give it up for Michaela. How you doing? It's really warm, isn't it? <laughs> Come over this way. So let me tell you something. This is a lot of boldness right here. She said, I'm going to follow Jesus. And all these folks, spontaneous, saying, you know what? I'm going to step out. I'm going to do what's necessary because I want to tell all these people Jesus is Lord. Isn't that right? Yeah, I appreciate you coming today. You ready? Let's do it. amazing Sunday. What an amazing Sunday. Lots of life change. We are so, so, so happy that you uh, came to join us here at uh, Velocity uh, this morning. And uh, we just wish you an amazing rest of the day and rest of the week. If you need this church, it is here for you. It is here for you. I'm going to pray and we'll be dismissed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you that you are the author of life and that you are in total control. And so, Lord, Lord, we just lay our lives at your feet. And, Lord, as we leave this place, Lord, would you give us your strength and courage throughout this week to proclaim your name through the words we speak, the thoughts we think, and the steps we take. And we'll be very careful to give you the honor and the praise and the glory for it all. In your wonderful name.
So oh. 